Tucker Carlson of Fox News decided to respond to what is taking place in Minneapolis currently, and his commentary was uh, predictable. But take a look, and I will respond afterwards. So that's what rioting looks like. It happened last night. As you can see, it's happening right now. We want to be clear, we're not showing you these pictures to defend the behavior of individuals on the Minneapolis Police Department. We're not. We're defending society itself. Rioting is the one thing you don't want. Ugly opinions, police brutality, officious bird watchers, rude entitled ladies walking their dogs in big city parks. All of that is bad. But none of it is nearly as bad as what you just saw. The indiscriminate use of violence by mobs is a threat to every American of all colors and backgrounds and political beliefs. Democracy cannot exist when people are rioting. Rioting is a form of tyranny. The strong and the violent oppress the weak and the unarmed. It is oppression. Now, some of you may not necessarily be that politically savvy and instinctively you might agree with what he had to say. But in case you didn't notice it, let me point it out for you. Whatever he said, the opposite is actually true. The power dynamic that he's describing, he flipped it. What he said, the opposite is true. It's like if I told you that I'm not actually the host of the Humanist Report, you're the host of the Humanist Report. Yes, you watching this and I'm actually the viewer. That is the level of absurdity that we're talking about here. And maybe you still aren't convinced. You have this visceral reaction to the rebellion that's taking place in Minneapolis. But let me ask you this. Which Tucker Carlson do you agree with more when it comes to protests? Do you agree with the Tucker Carlson that we just heard from, or do you agree more with this Tucker Carlson? This is America. We're allowed to disagree with what our leaders do however we like, and we're allowed to express that disagreement in public. That's our birthright. I mean, it kind of sounds like he's doing a 180. Does it not? Let me read that quote back to you. This is America. We're allowed to disagree with what our leaders do however ever we like and we're allowed to express our disagreement in public it's our birthright so the question to tucker is which is it are we allowed to publicly disagree with government however we like as you put it or are there restrictions in the way that we are able to engage in civil disobedience what's the parameters laid out for us einstein because you weren't very specific there. You just condemned the protesters. But let's go back to some of what he said in that first clip. So the first thing he says is we're defending society itself. Rioting is the one thing you don't want. Now, when he says that, is he trying to convince you that rioting isn't good for you? Or is he trying to convince us that rioting isn't actually good for the state? Furthermore, he says, the indiscriminate use of violence by mobs is a threat to every American. Is it actually a threat to every American or is it a threat to the establishment, to the powers that be? Because when society collapses because the people are fed up and they take to the streets, something that we saw with the Yellow Vest movement in France, for example, that forces the powers that be to respond. So who actually does the rioting pose a threat to in actuality, Tucker? Does it pose a threat to normal citizens or the establishment, the capitalist overlords? He also says, democracy cannot exist when people are rioting. Probably the most absurd thing that he said here. Rioting is a form of tyranny. The strong and the violent oppress the weak and the unarmed. It is oppression. So there's no way that he believes what he just said. There's no way. Because if he believed that, he would be so idiotic, have such a juvenile understanding of political definitions that he wouldn't be able to be a competent political commentator. But he knows what he's doing. But let's go over some of these definitions. The definition of tyranny reads cruel and oppressive government or rule a nation under cruel and oppressive government cruel unreasonable or arbitrary use of power or control ask yourself this does that sound more like the state and police officers arms of the state murdering unarmed civilians or does that sound more like the people who are protesting that injustice we know what it sounds like we know what tyranny means also, when it comes to oppression, it is prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. A state of being subject to unjust treatment or control. Are the people rebelling in Minneapolis the ones who are subjecting the state to cruel and unjust control? 
Or is the state the one that is subjecting them to cruel and unjust control, hence why they are rebelling and protesting? So do you understand what he did here? He completely flipped what's happening here. In response to tyranny and oppression, he calls the people the tyrants and the oppressors, rather than the state itself, rather than saying, you know, these people are speaking up against tyranny and oppression. He takes the power dynamic here and he reverses it. He says it's actually the protesters who are the ones who are doing tyranny and oppressing rather than the state oppressing them. So here's the thing. You can choose to use whatever political terms you want to describe situations, but you don't get to redefine their meanings. I think that it is important to point out the inherent tyranny and oppress oppression with this story, but you don't get to attribute, you know, uh, who the oppressor is if you don't even know how power dynamics work. It's the state who's the oppressor. It's the four police officers who murdered an unarmed black man. These are entities of the state. This is a state-sanctioned murder of a civilian. The people speaking up and rebelling, they're not the ones who are carrying out the oppression and the tyranny. They are speaking out against oppression and tyranny. But see, for Tucker Carlson, it's only oppression and tyranny if a democratic governor imposes some sort of policy that right-wingers don't like. So if Gretchen Whitmer is going to say, how about this, we're extending the lockdown for another two weeks and people storm the Michigan Capitol with guns, that's perfectly reasonable. That is exactly what we're allowed to do. We're allowed to disagree with what our leaders do however we like. But in this instance, we're not allowed to disagree however we like if we're actually calling out a real form of tyranny. Telling people that they should social distance and wear masks, that's not an actual form of tyranny. Murdering human beings, that is a form of tyranny. That is oppression. So Tucker Carlson is trying to use the language of populists. He's trying to speak as if he's a revolutionary, when in actuality he is a bootlicker. He is a state propagandist, trying to do everything in his power to quell this rebellion and uprising so he can protect the establishment that enriches him. That's what this is about. Don't trust this propagandist. He's lying to you.